Over the next few minutes, we will observe the construction process that took place in restoring the Upper Childs River and in creating a significant wetlands habitat. The Upper Childs River restoration project covers three principal areas the Garner Bogs in Mashpee, the Farley Bog in Falmouth, and the Dam and Impoundment area also in Falmouth. This project area is surrounded by property owned by the Falmouth Rod and Gun Club and is located within the Mashpee National Wildlife Refuge. Today, the river system is fed by groundwater and runoff, as its other source from the Johns Pond to the north was eliminated years ago. The cranberry bogs were farmed until 2014 when the farmer decided he could no longer sustain his business, and he therefore abandoned them. Once the Farley bog was purchased from the town of Falmouth, and the Garner bogs were leased from the town of Mashpee, project site preparation began. Two significant activities were undertaken before actual construction could begin. The staging of wood that was to be used for the project and the removal of stockpile sand that was stored by the cranberry farmers. Physical project construction could only begin when the final approvals and permits were in place. For ease of communication throughout this video, we will refer to the impounded water bodies as the North and South Ponds respectively. Once a single pond associated with mill operations in the 1800s, the water body was physically separated by a culvert when Carriage Shop Road came into existence. Now let's take a look at the transformation as it happened. A small portion of the land owned by the club near the Farley Bog was cleared so that the needed trees, logs, and root wads could be stored for the project. Over time, the inventory grew to several piles the size of the one you see here. In a location adjacent to the stockpiled wood was an area where the unused sand had been stored. Hundreds of tons of sand had to be removed to create space for the sand and soil that would be removed from the Farley Bog during construction. From here, materials like peat could later be repurposed. Thanks to the many partners seen on this posting, the Upper Childs River Restoration Project became a reality, and official construction activities began in late August of 2020. A majority of the funding needed for the project was obtained from associated awards, grants, and donations. Project construction began with the clearing of brush and small trees in the proximity of the earthen dam and the southern end of the South Pond. This area was of particular interest to the Massachusetts Historical Commission, as history tells us that the Bourne and Ewer Carriage Shop and Walk White Herring River Company were located in this vicinity. As a result, the Public Archaeology Laboratory needed visible access to the area in order to conduct a cultural resources survey. The once functional fish ladder shown here was also studied as part of the survey. When it was eventually decommissioned years ago, sea run brook trout were all but prevented from entering the Upper Childs River. The dam area was cleared to enable access to potential remnants of historical buildings, wheel pits, and other archaeological objects. Upon survey completion, final permits were issued, and heavy construction began. In early September of 2020, trees were cleared from various designated areas of the project to enable construction equipment access. Here you see work being done on the east side of the South Pond. Once cleared, the trees and shrubs were stored on site to be repurposed in stabilizing the river channel area later in the project. Like the South Pond, the North Pond was cleared on the east side and wood was stored for later use. Water had been impounded by the earthen dam at the southern end of the project area. The dam at the spillway was opened in order to begin dewatering the ponds, both the southern and northern sections. This partial draining facilitated the diversion channels to be dug. Diversions were dug in the Mill Pond area, the Farley Bog, and the Eastern Garner Bog. 
These diversions directed water away from where the future river channel would eventually be constructed. They also allowed water passage in a controlled manner while work was being done in the respective areas. The South Pond diversion was constructed along the east side. An aerial view shows the complete south section diversion between Cairn Shop Road and the old river channel. The new river channel will be located more along the tree line to the right. The North Pond diversion was also dug along the east side. As the north section was being partially dewatered, stream flow was quite brisk. This aerial view shows clearly the small island just west of the diversion. Most of the island and a large amount of the sediment will be removed from the pond and the river channel will be directed to the western side. Proceeding through the woods, we arrive at the Farley Bog where we see the diversion stretching south to north, mimicking the path of the existing river. Heading upstream to the Garner Bogs, Less defined diversion work was needed as the channels and ditches were already in place from cranberry farming. A well-defined river was not evident through casual observation. Once the new river channel is in place, these ditches will be filled in to prevent water ponding outside designated areas. All diversion work was completed before river channel construction began. Once the diversions were in place throughout the entire project area, sediment flow was controlled and river channel construction began at the eastern Garner Bog. A sinuous channel was dug along the western side of the bog. The adjacent tree bank would shield the new channel from the hot summer afternoon sun. In the lower right, a scummed over holding pond is visible. This pond would later be connected to a yet not constructed deep water pond at the north end of the western bog, not visible in this frame. Likewise, a new river channel was constructed along the western side of the Farley bog. In similar fashion, the new river will meander north to south along a protective tree line. The holding pond to the lower left will be expanded into the bog area and occupy a good portion of that open space. As the project moves forward, the diversion and lateral ditches will be filled in. With the river channels being completed, it was time for installing the wood consisting of trees, root wads, and slash materials. Installation of these materials is intended to stabilize the river bank, cool the river, as well as prevent erosion and protect the fish from predators. As seen here, the materials had to be sorted for an organized deployment. At the eastern bog, heavy trucks brought and dumped the wooded material near the river channel. The excavator operator would then meticulously place the material into the channel. At times, it appeared like a battlefield. In the background, the orange excavator is digging a pond away from the channel. A similar activity took place at the Farley Bog. Here you can see more clearly how the materials were oriented in order to accomplish their intended purpose mentioned earlier. The focus now shifted from the river to the wetlands and other wildlife habitat. As mentioned earlier, there is an east and west Garner Bog. At the northern end of the western bog, a deep water pond was dug to support diving duck and other aquatic wildlife. After the recently dug pond was completed, it was connected to the existing holding pond, effectively increasing the habitat area. The western Garner Bog would be home to two ponds, the one just mentioned, and a shallow dabbling duck pond constructed to its south. A much larger pond was constructed in the eastern bog area. Some old stumps were left to enhance the habitat. While construction was performed, water was diverted to enable equipment operation. On a cool winter's day, the size of the pond is revealed. It is now filled with groundwater, 
which will be its ongoing state. As some final touches were being made to the Garner bogs, we see that the eastern bog encapsulates the newly created pond. The western bog now has a deep water pond to the north and a dabbling duck pond to the top left. The river channel extends from the pump house at the north and makes its way along the tree line to the left of the large pond. In November, the existing pump house was removed and the channel was opened up for any downstream flow from the north. It should be remembered that the river source from John's Pond to the north no longer exists. A single large pond was excavated in the Farley Bog. Water was pumped out while construction was underway. Once completed, groundwater was allowed to re-enter the area. Looking at the pump house to the north, the large size of the pond is evident. This will make a nice home for wildlife. In view, the existing holding pond at the north end of the bog was graded and its connection was being prepared to engage the larger pond just mentioned. With the connection enabled between the two, the combined water bodies create one large water wetland area with both shallow and deeper pools. This aerial view better depicts the combined bodies with the holding pond area to the right and the manufactured pond to the left. Earlier, the Farley Bog pump house was removed and the channel upstream was cleared and graded. As work progressed, the ditches and diversion were filled in with materials excavated from other areas of the project. With recent rains, the Farley Bog became rather wet in some areas. Water pooling is visible. Further excavation will eliminate this down the road. As the river channel winds southward on the right, a highly visible pathway is being formed by the machinery hauling fill to the channel and ditches. With a great deal of work completed in the bog areas, it was time to do the microtopography. With sand removed in many areas, microtopography roughens up the surface of the bog to introduce topographic variability. This process enables exposure to underlying peat, nutrients, and dormant seedlings. Once this activity was completed at the Garner Bogs, the work team focused on the Farley Bog. This view of the Farley Bog gives you an idea of the extent to which the bog surface has been manipulated in order to create the desired end result. In January, work efforts moved to the southern end of the project. The earthen dam was notched and the bank on the right was graded. The proposed river channel will pass through this clearing as marked by the locating stakes. Water flow exiting to the left will eventually be eliminated. In this view, the notched area has been widened and the dam area removed and graded. A surveyor has staked out the river center line. Years of sediment buildup has created a deposit layer that is being removed in order to access a firmer surface before the river channel is cut. It took several days for the long reach excavator to prepare the surface. Significant progress has been made in removing the sediment. If you follow the diversion channel to the left, one can see the line of the existing river as it passes through the old spillway and heads south past the tall fir tree. To the right of the fir tree, the new channel will exit. As sediment has been removed and much of the water evacuated from the area, channel construction began along the western bank in late January. Still a bit soupy, the construction crew methodically prepared the channel during the month of February. The weather cooperated for the most part. Passage was cleared at the south end for water exiting the newly structured channel. When the project is completed, the diversions and old spillway will be closed and the river will reconnect downstream. In this view of the almost finished river, we see how the fabric encapsulated soil 
firmly establishes the river outline and maintains its integrity. Root wads were placed at the turns in the river to prevent erosion. Before serious work could begin in the North Pond area, the culvert under Carriage Shop Road had to be removed to facilitate water passage. Here you can see that over time, debris was lodged inside the culvert and that the culvert itself showed significant signs of degradation. The visible pumping line passing through the culvert was used to assist in dewatering the North Pond while the culvert was still in place. With some of the debris removed, one can see the difference in water levels at the culvert. That is to say, higher at the North Pond as the culvert effectively created a damming effect. With the culvert removed, a proper transition from north to south was created and water was allowed to flow freely throughout the diversion system. This portion of the diversion system remained in place until the new culvert was in position and the entirety of the river was turned on. Due to the pandemic, construction of the culvert was delayed and focus shifted to dewatering and drying out the North Pond. Excavation created a ponding of large amounts of water. It seemed as the sediment was removed, water took its place. To reduce the saturation levels, a long arm excavator spread out the sediment to help the moisture drain into the diversion. A sediment trap was created at the southern end of the North Pond to collect excess sand. This was necessary to protect marine resources as the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries restricts the time of year work can take place on coastal waterways. These efforts were insufficient to dewater the area adequately to enable channel work to begin. A three-stage discharge basin was set up south of Carriage Shop Road to filter large amounts of sand carrying water that was pumped over the closed road. The filtered water entered the river downstream of the discharge basin. As things started to dry out, channel construction began along the western side of the pond. Fabric encapsulated soil lifts were installed and root wads were inserted in the channel. However, the soil saturation was still somewhat evident. Over the next few days, things dried out enough for the construction crew to add snags along the river channel, first in the North Pond area and then along the South Pond Channel. Snags are dead or cut trees, branches, and woody debris that provides critical habitat for birds and mammals and assists in helping stabilize the landscape around the open channel. These snags were trimmed to make them less obtrusive and their surroundings more visually appealing. Finishing touches were made to the bog areas as well. Woody habitat for wildlife was added in the form of small logs and slash material piled in random locations throughout the wetlands. Over the years, the woods and bog perimeters have been a playground for some ATV enthusiasts. Large trees were placed near river crossings and in pathways from the woods to prevent ATVs from traveling across and destroying the channel and tearing up conservation lands. To aid nature's evolution of the project area and to help protect the overall investment, strategic plantings were essential. Seen here at the Garner Bogs, hydro seeding of riparian and vegetation zone seed mixes will establish a solid foundation and prevent erosion. In addition, 200 live stakes, 2,600 containerized plugs, along with a little over 2,000 shrubs and trees will populate the area when completed. In view at the southern portion of the project are Atlantic white cedar trees, a very popular variety for restorations like this. As animals are expected to be prevalent throughout, sensitive plantings are treated with plastic guards to prevent as much destruction as possible. And finally, the benefits of microtopography mentioned earlier are very evident at the Farley Bog. In just a few short months, the bog area is supporting new, 
revitalized growth. In May of 2021, the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife sampled trout populations just south of the project area. Using electrofishing, 19 one- and two-year-old trout were harmlessly caught, tagged, weighed, and returned to the river. As previously mentioned, during the process, passive integrated transponders, or pit tags, were inserted in the fish's body cavity for future tracking and monitoring of their behavior. Here you see a healthy specimen that is a little over 8 inches long. While electrofishing in the recently constructed river channel, no trout were encountered. But based on the populations below the project area, it is felt that they will migrate northward once the new culvert is in and the river is completely turned on. On May 26, 2021, the first 18-ton section of the culvert base was delivered, cautiously unloaded, and staged for installation. While other sections of the culvert were being transported, delivered, and staged, work continued at the culvert area. Here, the base foundation is being prepped. Once the foundation was firmly established and locating markers set, the four base sections were put into place and connected. Next, the wing walls were meticulously positioned and the overall structure was beginning to present itself. With the four guardrail transitions now in place, the roadbed was being formed and continuously tamped. From the southernmost point of the project area, one can see the new road taking shape. As finishing touches were being made to the culvert, construction materials were added to build up the road surface to grade level. At the South Pond area, the diversion was filled in and final grading was completed. A green carpet begins to surround the riverbed. Like the South Pond, the North Pond diversion channel was filled, the eastern side final graded, and the Central Island Plateau illustrated new vegetative growth. In late June, the Farley Bog featured a wooded meandering river, a large pond for aquatic wildlife, and a huge wetland area comprised of microtopography created pockets of water. Buried seedlings rushed to the surface to establish a lush habitat. A signature photograph of the Garner Bogs demonstrates the true diversity of the Upper Childs River restoration. The property, once cranberry bogs, was transformed into three shallow and deeper water ponds. The river is separated from the wetland areas by berms to prevent the wetland water from entering the cool river. Wildlife habitat features exist throughout. This final view is that of the culvert area which awaits just a few finishing touches. The road is paved and the new river channel water temperature was recorded at 58 degrees in July. The trout will return. A project of this undertaking could not have been completed without the support, involvement, and contributions of our members, partners, local, state, and federal government agencies, donors, and neighbors. We wish to thank you all for the treasure that has been created.